everybody. My name is Michael Manavian. I'm the director of golf here at the Clay Diagnostic Sports Labs, just over the border from Greenwich, Connecticut, in beautiful Port Chester, New York. Inside the Clay Health Club and Spa, talking to you today a little bit about cervical tilts. Being a stack and tilt authorized instructor, we talk a lot about tilting, extending, and turning to keep the hub stable at the top of the backswing. What we found utilizing the gear system here with it eight high def cameras that we have capturing at 360 frames per second. What we notice is that a lot of people as they're making a backswing tilt their neck to the right and attempt to s tilt their spine to the left. So we've got a little small bones here and if we talk about the cervical neck as the spine from the cervical area tilts to the left that'll open up the facet joints on the right to allow the nucleus propulsus to, or, or the discs in the middle, to move to the right side. So as the spine tilts to the left, the disc moves contralaterally to the right. So that allows the, sp the spine, in, in layman's terms, to, to rotate better. What I see most people doing is tilting their neck to the right and attempting to, to kind of turn to the right. And that just hurts. So if we put the spine down for a second, Go ahead and stand up and tilt your neck to the right. Make a backswing. You know, trying to make a backswing look down at the ball. You're going to really hurt your spine. As opposed to tilting to the left, allowing the spine to tilt to the left and allowing much greater freedom of the spine to rotate to the right. So, I'm going to show you a few things that we've captured here with our golfers. So as we look at one of the best golfers of all time here, Jack Nicklaus, you'll notice that his right eye is higher than his left eye, especially at the top of the backswing, which indicates that his left ear is closer to the left shoulder at the top of the backswing. His right eye isn't lower than his left. So if we now take a look at what that looks like in 3D, we have a student here who uh, came in complaining about not having enough shoulder turn. So. The before picture is on the right here in gold, and as we play the backswing out, you'll notice his limited shoulder turn is 76 degrees, 76.8 degrees, and that's about his max there, 76.8 we'll call it. And you'll notice that his right ear actually tilts, gets a little closer to his right side as it gets to the top of the backswing. What we asked him to do in just two swings, you'll notice swing four to swing six, we asked him to tilt his neck to the left. And just that little bit, you can notice quite a big difference in the gap here on the right side, was able to turn his body 90 degrees, his shoulders 90 degrees, increase his hip turn from 39.4 to 47 degrees. From the face on, as we zoom back in, we'll notice that now his hands went further. What this did was create, in, one, in two swings, further distance with the hands, increases club head uh, travel for a longer backswing, and increases swing from 62 miles per hour to 75. This gave him from 125 yard shot measured on the flight scope to 150 yard shot with a 7 iron. For a 70, uh, north of 70 year old guy, he was very happy with this swing. This also allowed him to turn more centered, getting the left shoulder more down. You'll notice his head now we put the head bubble in and, and compare the two side by side, his, his head doesn't leave the bubble as soon and he's able to keep his neck more centered. From the front on you can see the shoulder angle is much more vertical here, he's got about 90 degrees, whereas before his right shoulder wasn't getting as far back behind him. So cervical tilts, very important that the neck follows the direction of the shoulders. If you have any further questions, you're welcome to email me here at mmanavian at insideclay.com. Thanks so much, and we'll catch up with you next time.